Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeze and I'm based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. And in today's video, this is going to be a collaboration. Yay! <laughs> so yeah, in this video, I'm collaborating with Irene Manuel. Please, you guys should go and check her out after you finish watching this video or you can check her out now and come back, okay? And um, yes, I'm going to leave her name on the screen and in the description box. We are both going to be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of long distance marriages, okay? Yes, I'm going to talk about it from my own perspective. She's going to tell us her own, in fact, I can't even wait to watch her own video because I really like to hear, I don't hear much about this topic, you know, on social media and all that. So I'd like to hear what someone else has to say about it. While in this video, I'm going to be giving my thoughts. You guys know that i'm sort of in a long distance marriage so i'm going to go into all that in this video so but like i said please go and check her out and also support her channel let us support each other and let everyone grow okay so yeah if you guys would like to know my thoughts on this topic basically like would i advise someone to be in a long distance marriage is it um, what are the disadvantages what are the advantages if you guys would like to know all of that then just keep on watching <laughs> You guys, I need this malt to get me through this video because I'm not feeling too well. I'm just recovering from one of the worst diarrheas I've had in my life. <laughs> we like call it that I was just stooling. I don't know that I ate and I was stooling, so I'm trying to recover. So if I look dull in this video, please pardon me. I'm just I'm just trying to do this video because it's my job. Anyway, so basically, would I advise anyone to be in a long distance marriage? First of all, my answer is no. I would advise any, if anybody that is, you know, trying to get married, ask me today, Ada, what do you think I'm going to get married to someone who's going to be living in a different city from me? What do you advise? I'm going to say no, okay? And I'll tell you the reasons why. But before I tell you the reasons why, let me even tell you the different types of long distance marriages that we have out there, at least the ones that me I know about, okay? We have the long distance marriages where both couples are living in different cities in different countries okay basically husband and wife both live in different countries in many cases the husband is the one that goes to visit the wife because the wife is with the kids in a lot of cases that i've seen i've seen cases where the wives live in nigeria with their children while the husband lives abroad and he comes to visit once in a while or where the wife and the children live in canada which is the one of the most popular either canada or america that's where the wife and children live and the man walks, lives and walks in Nigeria. So they are maintaining two different households in two different countries, okay? I can't, it can never be me. It can never be me. <laughs> I just, I can't do that, okay? Now, I've seen people who did it successfully, not a lot, okay? Let me just admit it here, okay? We don't lie to ourselves on this channel. I have not seen a lot of families who successfully maintained two different households in two different countries and everything went on smoothly. I mean, I've, I don't, I've not seen a lot of cases like that, okay? But that's just me. It can work for anyone out there. I'm not judging, okay? Now, the second type I know about is they live in two different cities in the same country. So, in, like in Nigeria, uh, maybe the husband lives in Lagos, the wife lives in Abuja, the husband lives in Abuja, the wife lives in Potakot, you know, and stuff like that. And like in most cases, the wife stays with the kids and the husband stays alone. Or in some cases, like I've seen one case where the husband stays with the kids while the wife works in a different city, okay? So, for that one, that one is a little bit manageable, but I still do not advise that. It's still not for me. I don't believe in maintaining two different households as a married couple. I, I, I just, I, I, can't, I can't see myself doing it, okay? But like I said, the people who have done that successfully... Not a lot, but there's some people who have done that, okay? Now, the third type, which I know about and which is my own experience, is that we live in the same house, we live in the same city, we maintain just one household, but he has to be on a facility for work, Some, as in, in he has a schedule, okay? So, sometimes it's two weeks in a month, sometimes it's three weeks in a, one, a month, right now it's like six weeks in a month, yeah? Six weeks or seven weeks. 
but uh, not even a month but yeah but right now it's almost like six weeks he's out of the house he's living on a facility um i've seen cases where is it that maybe the guy is a rig worker or the man um it's usually men in i've seen in most cases but i've seen a woman too who was a rig worker or if the man um does things like construction and he has to go and work in different cities to do construction so in that case some too many in, in cases like that you see that the man stays for an extended period of time but when he's done working basically this in our own case when he's not working he's at home they have just one household if he's not at home he's on a facility or at a location maybe he's an actor or something he's just in a place for work but he lives in the house with his wife and children okay so which is my own case and which is something that I still struggle with this is almost 10 years after we're going to be 10 years in marriage next year yeah next year we're going to be 10 years in marriage but this year we clocked 10 years together and i am still not used to it okay i'm still not used to it and even though i say oh i don't advise people to do long distance marriages and all that i'm not going to be naive or you know and say that it's not something that is, is going to happen more you know actually in our generation it's something that's going that it's something that we can't really run away from actually in our generation where a lot of people get married early and both parties are pursuing their careers either the man is pursuing his career or the wife pursuing her career it's not like in the olden days where the man pursues career and the wife just ups and follows him anywhere he's going in our own cases you know wife is hustling husband is hustling because <laughs> times are hard okay and things are not as easy as they used to be okay so i'm not going to deny that okay so there are cases where it is unavoidable you can't really avoid living in different cities or in different countries or in different you know locations or whatever so yeah even though it's something i don't advise i'll always say do what's best for you and your family don't listen to what anybody on the internet is just blabbing on about do what's best for you and your family but i will still advise that know that <laughs> it's always better for a couple to be together than to be apart okay don't let anybody deceive you and say this time makes the heart go from that hair <laughs> no it does not <laughs> short distance okay short distance um you know some time apart makes the heart go fonder but a long time apart cases where husband comes to visit the wife maybe three times a year because she's traveling across countries now that there's even corona some people are stuck in different countries it doesn't make the heart go fonder okay it doesn't okay what it ends up doing is creating two totally very independent people who are used to not being with each other so when they find themselves in the same space you know it's almost like i can't wait for this person to leave i can't wait for this guy to go it's almost like that they have to learn each other every time they have to come together okay um because they are in different cities sometimes it's difficult to anyway i'm going to get into that this, I'm, what i'm talking about now is basically like the disadvantages okay sometimes it's difficult to settle issues because you are both in different cities different locations it's not like when you're living together that i am sleeping on the same bed that's you know even if you vex finish and face the wall, him to face the wall. Sometimes in the night, somebody's body will touch the other person's body, and before you know, it, people will reconcile. Okay? In many cases, you quarrel and you're in both in different cities and you cannot settle that quarrel then because you know it's either okay for instance you're quarreling on the phone and you're like i can't talk i can't talk you decide to go to text message we all know that text messages can be misconstrued and then person gets angry before you know what's happening malice for days you know so it's easier for quarrel and it's easier for the devil to go and enter a marriage when they are apart i'm not saying the devil does not enter marriages where they stay together that's not my point all i'm just trying to say is that when you are apart you increase the chances of the devil to come and break that unity between you okay but anyway let me even start from the advantages actually okay so the first advantage of you know <laughs> a long distance marriage is like in my own case where i said we maintain the same household one of the advantages is that anytime he's away i miss him a lot and anytime he's back we because we know that we don't have so much time to spend together we cherish the time we have together okay 
we try not to even quarrel. I mean, we always we are, everybody quarrels, okay? But we try not to quarrel as much because the person you are quarreling with will soon go. <laughs> there are times that my husband will tell me, "Okay, now continue talking." She be me, I will soon go. Nobody will disturb you again, <laughs> you know. So like, if I'm telling him oh, one thing, he will say, "Don't worry, now she be, I will soon go. I, will, I won't be here to disturb you again." And I'll be like, "Ha, ah, it's true," you know. And I'll start feeling bad, and then you know, we just make up. So yeah, um, at times like that we really miss each other and we cherish the time that we have together for me personally another advantage is that hmm, i don't have separation anxiety <laughs> i've seen i don't know I don't, maybe it's not maybe it's not um just not my personality but i see people who i have friends who when their husbands travel they start crying they can't stay without him. They need someone to come and stay in the house with them. When he's leaving, they are wailing. The husband will be thinking twice whether he should go or he should not go. I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Maybe because even when I met my husband, he was in a different city. You know, when we eventually got married, he was in a different... When we eventually got married, he was always going for work. So, I've never had that anxiety or fear or, or you know, that, oh, my husband is leaving. I always... I feel bad when he's leaving sometimes. That, that does not mean I don't feel bad, okay? So now when he's leaving, I'm just like, ah, oh, does he have to? Actually, with everything that's going on around the world, I really, really wish my husband was at home with me. But it doesn't mean that when he's going, I'll now break down and start crying. I, 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 I don't get... What are you crying for? I've seen it more with people who live with their husbands 247. So the few times that he wants to travel abroad or travel to a different city for something, it's almost like they can... They, they're like... like kill me now <laughs> it's only like they cannot cope i'm just like ah i don't get it another advantage is that i have more time for myself um not now anyway now that i have children i really don't have time for myself but when i didn't have kids i had more time to find myself let me put it that way because even though you guys know i got married early so when i got married is the time i got married most of my mates at that time were trying to find themselves, were trying to, you know, live alone, you know, do things on their own and stuff like that, okay? In my own case, I was already married. So the advantage of that for me is that I he wasn't at, at he wasn't with me two four seven. So there were times where it felt like I was still single. I, I was working, I had time for myself, I had time to learn myself, I had time to get to know myself better, I had time to really grow up. Okay, another advantage, this one's an advantage to me, is no too much cooking. Because he's not around all the time. The only time I really enter kitchen and be throwing down and be, you know, doing everything is when my husband is around. When he's not around, most times we eat all the leftovers from when he was around. When the leftovers finish, I will now manage and cook one thing or the other. Now, most times, the only reason why I enter kitchen is because of Amarachi and the kids. But it was even more an advantage when I didn't have children. Like, that too, we spend my husband around. Don't worry, I will cook food for you. I will give you good food. But the moment he leaves, I was eating at restaurants, I was eating out, I was eating snacks, I was eating bole, I was eating anything, I was not bothering myself with cooking. Like, so me now, if I'm alone, I don't have children, I don't have a, a, a house help, I will now cool down, I'm gonna start cooking soup for myself alone, I don't understand, like, I don't get it. When I see single people who cool down and go to the kitchen and just be doing all kinds of cooking, I'm like, wow, I can't relate, it can never be me, <laughs> it can never be me. If for any reason my children maybe go for holidays in Lagos and my husband is at work, I ain't cooking ish, okay? I'm not cooking anything. I will just be hopping from one restaurant to the other. You know, another advantage is that I can sleep anyhow. I lie down on my bed. I can sleep straight. I can sleep sideways. I can sleep <laughs> diagonally. <laughs> I can sleep any way I want. Now it's a little bit different for me because now that I have kids, if my mother's not on my bed, at least one person, especially Eva, will always come to my bed, okay? But when I didn't have kids, it was a big advantage for me because I told you guys that when my husband is around, I usually wake up in the night to go and check, is he lying down well? Is he sleeping properly? Yeah, how is his pillow? Uh, is the blankets covering him very well is he cold is he hot is he sweating is mosquito biting him this and that that's what i usually do when he's around so when he's not around my dear i sleep like a baby <laughs> that's another advantage for me and also i don't know somehow i feel like i save more money when my mom is not around maybe because i don't cook so much i don't know but i feel like i save more money when he's not around than when he's around I don't know what it is. I don't know if, if it's true, but I think like I think that as a household, we actually save more money when he's not around because when he's not around, there's one less person to feed, is one less person to. I don't 
Oh no, like I don't know. I think we save money, Sha. But yeah, those are advantages that I'll say. Well, what other advantage? I don't know. If you're in a long distance marriage and you have any advantage, please leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know what you are enjoying, okay? So yeah, one disadvantage for me is that I miss my husband a lot. A lot. I can't explain it. If you're a kind of person that lives with your husband 247, you can't relate. You won't understand this, but I miss him a lot. Um, there you know how something just happens in your life and you can easily just go and tell your partner like if your partner is in, if your partner is in the same city even getting him on the phone is easier you know when he comes back you start downloading your day for him for telling him this one happened to me that one happened to me it won't happen that one you know just partner gossip partner whatever i want to call it in my own case sometimes when something happens and i want to call him he's busy at work his number is not going or even if he's going because he's busy he cannot leave what he's doing and go and pick the call okay because for him when he's working he's working when he's at work he's work it's not like um people that go to office that sometimes they have time to lounge they have time to rest this one is when they are working they are working the only time that he has time to rest is in the evening when he's about to sleep okay so most of them like calling me in the evening he's tired i'm tired we we'll just jeez 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 do video calls many times we have to bring the kids into the video call so we just talk about our day but it's not even though i tell him everything that happens to me it's not the same as when i see the hot do you understand there are many times that something happened to me and i'm like hey let me call my husband though i'll call him but he's busy and also i can do about it so or if I, I don't know, if you're a kind of person that your husband lives in a different time zone, I can't even imagine how your might even be worse because you might be calling him, he's sleeping, or you know, when you're sleeping, he's awake, when he's awake, you're sleeping. So, another disadvantage is actually worry, okay? Worry. Now, I pray for my husband a lot, you know, I always pray for him, I pray for his job, I pray for his safety, and I have faith, and I know that God is with us, and nothing bad will ever happen to him, you know, I'm just, I'm just... I just have faith that you know everything is going to work out well he's going to be fine the same way he left me the same way he's going to come back to me each and every time and thank god you know god has been with us so far like we've not had any we've not had any you know nonsense story or whatever we've not had any and we'll never have in jesus name okay amen now that being said it does not mean that i am not a human being okay there are times that I'll call my husband, call my husband, he will not pick. I'll say, hey, chinekenna, I can't, I can't know. <laughs> you think you have faith until some kind of things happen. Like, uh -uh, I call him the first day. Normally, we always talk every single day. Okay, so we talk every single day. We talk most times once in the morning, once at night, sometimes once in the afternoon, once at night. But we always talk at night at least, okay? So we talk every single day. But there are times when he's either maybe busy with something or they have, you know, something they have to tackle, something they have to deal with in wherever location that they are in or whatever, you know, and he can't just go to his phone. He can't pick his call. Hey, you guys, after the first day I call, 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 you did not pick. I send messages, you did not respond. Okay. You know, but we have faith. No, there's no worry. There's no worry. By the next day, I call, 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 you did not pick. I'm like, chukuna, chinekenna. Melumebele. Melumebele, chinekenna. What is happening? You know, all that faith that you had before will just fly out. You know, so, yeah, most of the time that see, baby, no matter what, just, just check in. Just come and, and, and type and send attendance. Come and uh, mark attendance. I tell him, always mark attendance every day. Even if you are very busy, like you are, like you are, in fact, you are neck deep in the work. Nah, just say, I'm fine, okay? Or just type something. Let me know you are good. Because, yeah, like I said, it's not easy. I can imagine people who live in, like now, for instance, you live in, maybe your husband lives in America and they're rioting in his city. Or your husband lives in one place and they, you hear that they have, as in... I don't know how to explain it. It's just not easy when the person is not there physically with you. It's just not easy. If, if the person is in the office that you can just quickly drive down to his office, it's a different case. Man, I cannot quickly drive down to anywhere. So, yeah, as much as we have faith, as a woman who her husband lives in a different city, in fact, both couples, it works both ways because, like, for instance, I told you guys I'm just recovering from one of the worst diaries of my life. You guys, like, it got to a part, it was really bad. Like, my husband kept calling me to know how far. It was really bad. Sometimes he would come, I won't be able to talk. 
I actually thought of driving myself to the hospital in the middle of the night, like 1 a.m. I thought of, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I need to just get myself to the hospital. Thank God that Amarachi is even at home, so I had to, she had him help me to make ORS, which I now took before I now started having a little bit of energy, but it, it still took me time for me to recover, okay? Like, it's even today that I even feel good enough. That's why I'm even making this video today. Today's a Thursday. This video is going up tomorrow, okay? So anyway, so even in his own case, where he is, imagine you being in a place where you cannot quickly drive home and you hear that your wife is, 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 is at home and she's stooling and she cannot even talk. You call her on the phone and she's talking like someone that's already going. Like, how would he feel where he is, okay? So it, work, it works both ways. Um, I, might imagine, I can remember there when I was pregnant or when I was alone. The time I was pregnant and I was alone with Cora, okay? Like I told you guys, I didn't have a help till... Um, I gave birth to Ava, okay? So I was pregnant with Ava and I was alone with Cora and Cora was stooling and vomiting and losing energy. Hey, hey, you guys, like my husband where he was, I'm sure uh, he'll be like, what, what, what kind of thing is this? Even when I was going through what I was going through, I was like, better me than them, or better me than them. Because when you see children going through such, I mean, me now, I have plenty flesh now. I've lost like 2 kg, but I'm sure that nobody can even notice because I still look the same. I'm still fleshy. But you know when children lose um energy like that it's very very scary okay so then imagine someone who is pregnant and who has a toddler with her and you're not even there to take care of them and and and, and, and for me personally i didn't even have like family in port harcourt i'll say i'll just call my mom i'll call my dad or i'll go to my sister's house or i'll go to my brother's house or my uncle's house or my auntie's house i don't have anybody him he doesn't even have anybody too as well so i can't even say i'll call his mom or i'll go to his brother's house or something okay so imagine that kind of situation and you are there your wife now calls you and says see you maybe i'm in labor or something you're not there so that worry is something that you are going to constantly have to battle but like i said as long as you are prayerful and as long as like for me what i always do is that whenever i that fear comes to my heart i'm just like i reject it immediately i don't even allow it to stay i reject it immediately i start i start confessing positive i start declaring god's word i start declaring like healing over my family you know safety whatever it's always say for because of me eh because of my husband if anything bad was happening wherever in his city in his state wherever he is because of my husband that thing's not going to happen just simply because my husband is there nothing's going to happen so that's that's those are the kind of things that you know keep us going as a couple okay now another disadvantage is that raising children is Oh, I don't know how to explain this. It's a chore. It's a chore because it's almost like I'm a single mom most of the time when he's not around. And like, I, like in my own case, I'm grateful that I have a husband who is always, you know, when he's around, he's around. And that's another advantage in our own case. When he's around, he's around. It's not like he's around and he's going to work. No, when he's around, he's around 247. He doesn't go anywhere. If he goes out, maximum one hour, he's back. And most times he goes out to go and fix one car, one thing in the car or buy fuel or buy um, gas or what else does he go out for? As in going out without us. There's really nothing that my husband goes out of the house to do without us. So when he's around, he's around and he takes care of the kids and he trains them as well but most of the time he's not around and it's me and the children so even my children they are now older and i'm noticing that they act differently when he's when he's around yes my children actually act differently um somehow it's like they have more sense when he's around i don't know how it works okay something that my children not do on a normal day that i'll be shouting stop it stop it hey cora hey eva oh, help me now people should leave me alone now you know things like that, that they do when he's not around when he's around They'll be prim and proper and i'm just like what's happening <laughs> what's happening it's almost like the training i train them when he's not around it's like it's almost like it takes effect when he comes back <laughs> you know so yeah um that's a, that's a disadvantage i don't even know how people who the husband visits them you know once a year twice a year three, three times a year i don't even know how they do it because it's almost like you're a single mom you're raising your children alone okay now i'm not saying that single moms cannot raise good children but all i'm saying is that it is easier when there is a good father and a good mother in the house training the children it is far easier okay so yeah if you have a good husband i'm sure you are going to relate with me but if maybe you don't have a good husband you might you might be thanking god he's not there to spoil your children <laughs> okay so yeah in my own case that's one of the disadvantages you know so what we do about it is that when they misbehave i'll say oh you are misbehaving i'll be okay i'm going to call daddy you will not see cora begging and the funny thing is that 
I'm even, he doesn't shout at them that much, even though he's kind of strict, but he doesn't really shout at them that much, you know, he allows them to play with him, and you know, they watch cartoons together and everything, he takes care of them, but still, once I say I'm going to call that the ah, you see, <laughs> you see Cora saying, sorry, 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 um, yeah, so, then, uh, whenever we are on a video call with them, I always try to tell him that, see what Cora did during the day, this, that, this, then he'll talk to her, and you know, so, somehow, we try to make it work, but, yeah, it's still not easy. Now, the last disadvantage, and I made this one the last because um, it's not my reality right now, but it kind of affected me in the beginning, and that is if you are going through an infertility journey, it's actually worse for you when your partner is not around. It is worse for you. There are times when I feel like that's what part of why the delay was longer in our own case. Because there were months where, because him he goes, he goes on a schedule, there were months when my ovulation period was when he's not around, okay? So, there's nothing you can do about it. We cannot study it in. <laughs> we cannot study it in and be inseminating ourselves, okay? So, you have to wait. So, there were months where we had to wait for the calendar to kind of realign before we now continue trying and all that and all that. So, it can be difficult if you are going through fertility issues. Well, if I come a person that when you even call your husband on the phone, you get pregnant, it's not a problem for you, okay? <laughs> so anyway, yeah, those are the advantages and disadvantages of a long-distance marriage. And like I said, there are ways to make it work. Always, always have one mind. Both of you should always have one mind that we are trying to make this work. And also, try and make it a temporary um, situation. Let's not be that... Your, your plan is to continue living in two different cities for the rest of your lives. Like, I don't know how that's going to work for anybody, but let it be a temporary situation. Let it be that, okay, we're doing this for just three years, we're doing this for two years, we're doing this for five years till you get your degree or whatever, whatever. Let it, let it be a temporary situation. Both parties should actually work together towards living in the same city. So, either one person makes the sacrifice or you both make some kind of compromise so that you can live in the same household it is always better that way okay remember that this video is a collaboration with irene manuel here on youtube please go and check her out um yeah just support her channel and hopefully you guys enjoy her video and you continue to watch her other videos as well please watch her other videos okay thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you all in my next video Bye guys!